Hey guys, it's Dr. Childs here. Today we're going to be going over number two, or lesson number two in our thyroid beginner series. And today we're going to address the topic of why is there so much controversy surrounding thyroid treatment. So this is a really important topic because what you'll find throughout a, throughout a lot of places um, on the internet and if you go talk to your doctor is you'll find two pretty separate and distinct approaches to how um, doctors handle thyroid disease or hypothyroidism and how they address treatment. Okay, and so um, there's a there's sort of a conventional approach and then there's the integrative approach, which I would say integrative as in, I, I'm using that term to refer to um, holistic uh, doctors or integrative doctors or functional medicine doctors. So sort of um, th that different sort of classification. And by conventional doctors, I'm referring to endocrinologists and primary care providers. And what you'll find is that there's a, a huge difference in the way that these two people or two groups of people look at how they treat thyroid patients. And it's really interesting because, you know, the conventional doctors are the ones that you most people go to, right? These are the doctors that take insurance. These are the endocrinologists and the PCPs. And the people that go to these doctors, they tend to go to the internet because they're not feeling well despite being told that they're normal or they're suffering from issues like fatigue and depression even though they have so-called normal tests and then they find information like this all and all you know and all over the internet and then they get confused so why does this exist um, why, why does this happen so let's talk about conventional doctors and then we'll talk about integrative doctors and their approach and the differences between um, these this between these two groups of people. So I have an image here because we're going to talk about the TSH. So let's talk about conventional doctors. The first thing that you'll notice about them is that they use only the TSH. Um, they believe that that's the only test necessary to evaluate the thyroid. Now, if you look at this this study here, this is a study I'm using just to, just to talk about this and to prove a point, but it says TSH is the best and oftentimes only test needed um, to assess the thyroid, and they have this information here. Now, if you've listened to my previous um, thyroid beginner series are number one and you're going to listen to the other ones, you'll understand that the TSH is only part of, of the thyroid uh, feedback sort of loop that's in your body between the hypothalamus, the pituitary, pituitary and the thyroid. And, all, and so you can see it here. So what, what they're doing is they're saying, well, hey, this is produced by the pituitary and it talks to the thyroid. So if the TSH is normal, then the whole system must be normal. That's, that's the logic that they're using. Okay. Then, um, so whenever they evaluate you, they're looking only at the TSH and they're saying, if the TSH is normal, then you are normal, period. They don't care about TRH, they don't care about T4, they don't care about T3. Okay, so we'll talk about that in just a second here. The next thing they do is they only treat with T4 only thyroid medication. So these would be medicines like levothyroxine and Synthroid. And they say something along the lines of, if a patient has a normal TSH, then the thyroid is fine. Even if they have low circulating levels of T4 and T3, and they probably don't even check these, by the way. And they also say you're normal if your TSH is, is normal, even if you have all of the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So you can have a, a normal TSH, but still have constipation, fatigue, weight gain, hair loss, the inability to lose weight, menstrual irregularities, all of the symptoms of hypothyroidism. So those are obviously connected to low thyroid function, but if you have a normal TSH, they ignore everything, right? And this is what leads patients to seek out alternative therapies because they're like, well, something has to be different. I can't feel like this and still be normal, right? It just doesn't make any sense. And pe people know their bodies, right? They, they know what's normal for them. So now we have, so that's sort of the conventional approach in a box. I real, I'm not going over this in detail, but just so you understand. And then we have the integrative approach. Um, and part of the integrative approach, I want to, I want to talk about a couple things here. So we know that the pituitary gland produces TSH, which is the hormone that they test, but we also know it, it spits out other hormones. Okay. It spits out FSH and LH. It also spits out ACTH. So why do we care about those hormones? Well, because we can use those as a case study to help us understand why for some reason doctors treat the thyroid differently than any other hormone system in the body. And I'll give you a perfect example. The example is of birth control pills. So if doctor and doctors give these out like candy, right? So if you're, if you're a young woman, generally they don't give it to older women, but if you're a young woman, their chances are uh, if you have acne or if you have menstrual problems, you've been recommended a birth control pill. Now, what you probably don't realize is that birth control pills contain massive amounts of synthetic hormones, usually progesterone and estradiol analogs. Now, if we applied the same standard that conventional doctors apply to thyroid, 
to the to the birth control pills, then they would be really concerned with what the FSH and what the LH were, because this is the these are the two hormones that are equivalent to the TSH. But guess what? If a doctor gives you birth control pills, they never check the FSH, they never check the TSH or, or the LH, and they don't even care what the your hormone levels are of estrogen or progesterone. So that's one instance in which they just this whole logic of using the TSH as a as an analog for um, di for function for hormone function in the body is not is not a great match. Now the second one is the case of testosterone. So in if this is especially true in women, but also true in men. So if we applied the same logic using testosterone, what we would do is we would give you testosterone, and we would check your FSH and LH to determine what the level is what the appropriate level is. But that's not how we do it at all. In fact, we give you testosterone, and then what do we look for? We look for the actual amount of hormone in your blood, and that is the total amount of testosterone, right? We're not interested in what your FSH and LH is. We're interested in how much hormone did we actually give you. So if you, if you compare these, these instances, you'll see that the way that conventional doctors look at thyroid is different from all the other symptoms or all the other systems that are and hormones that are produced from the pituitary gland. So it's very strange. So there's that. And then now let's talk about a little bit of um, the way that these uh, integrative doctors look at other factors. So they look for the TSH. We, they still test for that. But they also look at your free thyroid hormones. So that would be T4 and T3 as it relates to your thyroid. If they were checking your testosterone, guess what? They would look for your testosterone. They wouldn't look for your FSH and LH because they're concerned about your testosterone. And the same thing with estrogen and progesterone. So doctors that are integrative, they tend to order more expansive tests to look at all areas of this entire system here. They're interested in how much T4 you have, how much T3 you have, and what your TSH is, as well as a couple other tests. The next thing is they take into account the uh, individual by looking at other factors such as um, genetics. Okay, and I'll give you one example. So it's, if we look at everyone around us in a room, it's easy to see that we're all different. We all have different hair colors. We all have different skin types. We all have different um, sizes. Our heart rates beat at different rates. So why is it not possible that, or, or why shouldn't we even consider the fact that our thyroids are going to be functioning at different rates? I mean, we have to consider this fact. But conventional doctors don't. They say a one size fits all for everybody, and it just doesn't even make any sense from a logical standpoint. But this is how they look at it. So what what the the reason I'm bringing genetics into this is because there are certain um, what are called SNPs or genetic changes that affect your ability to convert and utilize these thyroid hormones. And about 15% of people have these issues. Okay, so it's not an insignificant amount. And then lastly, integrative doctors, they use more than just the T4 medication um, to treat thyroid hormone. So what they do is they look, they use medications that contain T3 thyroid hormone, which is right here, which is naturally produced by your thyroid gland, um, in addition to T4. They use combination of medications, and they, they uh, dose those based off of the TSH, but also based off of your free thyroid hormones. And so by doing all of these sort of factors in one, patients tend to feel a lot better. They, they have better results. They're able to reduce their fatigue. They're able to lose the weight that, they, that they've that they gained in the process of being treated by the conventional approach. And this has driven a lot of patients to seek this integrative approach. And this has caused this very strange phenomenon where conventional doctors, they sort of double down on the way that they're looking at things. And they refuse to look at anything that's new. And then integrative doctors, sort of, they do their own thing as well. And there's some issues with, with some of that as well. I'm not saying, um, you know, one side is perfect and the other is not. But in reality, if you are not feeling well and you have thyroid disease, then it might be working, worth looking at these other um, options that are available to you. And it's also worth just taking a logical approach to looking at how your thyroid functions. Because I think you'll find that if we apply the same rules that we apply to just any other pituitary-based hormone, that the, the way that we look at thyroid just doesn't measure up. And so anyway, this was a real quick sort of lesson in why there's so much controversy surrounding thyroid treatment and the big differences between how conventional doctors think and, and treat the thyroid and how integrative doctors think and how they treat the thyroid. So if you have any questions based on this, this is just a quick primer, but please leave them below. And otherwise, we'll talk about the, the next um, lesson coming up here um, later this week.